Good afternoon to everyone. It is a pleasure to open hearing number 21 of the 180 period of session of the commission. This hearing is for the protection of the human rights of, of human rights defenders and communicators in Mexico. This hearing was requested by a group of civil society organizations and I want to greet the state. Thank your presence here today, civil society organizations and also the representative in Mexico of the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights of the UN. I am Julissa Mantilla, first vice president of the commission. I am here today with Commissioner Aros Esmeralda Rosemena, country reporter and reporter on the rights of children, Commissioner Margaret May Macaulay, reporter on the rights of women and Afro descendants, Commissioner Estuardo Relon, reporter on the rights of persons deprived of liberty, uh, fight against uh, torture and persons with disabilities. Also, Assistant uh, Executive Secretary for Monitoring. Um, Maria Claudia Pulido, Special Rapporteur for Freedom of Expression, Pedro Vaca, and Soledad Garcia Munoz, a Special Rapporteur for Social, Economic, Cultural, and Monumental Rights. Uh, we are going to start with the presentation of the civil society for 20 minutes, 20 minutes for the state as well. Afterwards, the United Nations expert will speak for seven minutes. Then we will have the participation of the Inter-American Commission for 20 minutes. And we will have 10 more minutes for civil society and the state. We have a timer in the platform in order to keep track of time. Please bear that in mind. We have simultaneous interpretation and subtitles. And this hearing as all others is going to be uploaded to the YouTube channel of the Commission. I will remind you to keep your cameras open and to turn off your microphones when you're not speaking. Having said this, we will start the hearing with the participation of the civil society for 20 minutes. Good afternoon. I'm sorry. I didn't have internet connect connection. My name is Jan Albatores, and I am the representative of the Committee for the Protection of Journalists. Dear commissioners, representatives of the Mexican state organizations and uh, civil society collectives that are here present today, we want to thank you the opportunity for having such an important dialogue on the uh, situation of journalists and defenders in Mexico, taking into account the increasing stigmatization against journalists, uh, human rights defenders, and civil society organizations. The special rapporteur for freedom of expression in the report 2019 showed a concern for the situation in the region of stigmatization for journalists and media outlets by high um, public officials and coordinated attacks. This practice that it is present in democratically elected countries, uh, governments, increases the vulnerability for journalists. Taking into account stigmatization against the journalists, there have been um, different uh, murders of journalists and there are 24 persons missing in 2020. Today, Mexico is among the 180 account is the worst uh, ranking for the protection of per, uh, journalism. In this classification, the normalization of these stigmatizing speeches creates more violent attacks to journalists, taking into account the index of impunity for the murder of journalists, according to the Committee for the Protection of Journalists, Mexico is in the sixth place. The situation of the persons, human rights defenders, is not better. Between 
2019 and 2020, 44 persons, human rights defenders, were murdered. These murders and violence against defenders occurs within a context characterized by the lack of action by the Mexican state, militarization, impunity, and extractivist economic policies that put defenders at risk. Now we will show a video that will evidence how public officials use the stigmatization and criminalization to um, censor and attack the um, journalists and defenders. Thank you. Human rights defenders were silent before massacres, even UN organizations, human rights defenders of the OES. No. How many appeared? How many? Well, first find out and then ask. The city of Mexico is a violent place. The protection of uh, human rights causes them to attack monuments, for example, tortures, disappearances, massacres. Human rights are respected. They are media outlets that are focused on the saddest side of news. And now, It is a tool of the most conservative ones. We have information that all organizations that are alleged independent, that receive money, some from the uh, overseas, to oppose the construction of the Mayan train. I'm not going to say anything to you. I do not attack confront media outlets. The media outlets, not all of them, are the ones that attack the government. The newspaper Proceso, the magazine, do not behave well with us. I'm not making any excuses. Reforma is uh, terrible newspaper when governor when the governor speaks you cannot speak you should learn that they are not enemies to me we need to silence journalists they just punch you to see your reaction to see how we deal with that. We are not censoring anyone. We are not persecuting anyone. With all due respect, journalists are being mad, Mr. President. That is not a decision made by the state. I am talking about the uh, role of the state here. Presidents decide to cancel shows before. Some media out outlets instigate violence. Journalism, sometimes they talk about smear campaigns, liberalization and dissemination, use of information by these media outlets commit abuses by disseminating, provoking violence, tell fake information that may affect the president officials of the Mexican state in all their posts. We have decided 
has never before no they have not filed claims estimadas comisionados dear commissioners my name is Leopoldo Maldonado, the director of Article 19 for Mexico and Central America. I'm going to uh, describe stigmatization and its impact against press. In, in Mexico, a journalist is attacked every 13 hours. Last year, 162 aggressions were registered against media outlets and journalists uh, in connection with their work. 14% uh, more than in 2019. 50% were committed by public officials. That is the main attacker of the press. In June this year, we have registered 74 attacks against, against the press. As Jan has mentioned, attacks against the press are uh, in 98% of the cases um, end up in impunity. There are factors that unleash violence. For example, the so-called war against uh, drug dealing and the increasing militarization. And these are excuses. As we have seen in the video, the state allows aggressions to occur. The strategy to uh, for the division stigmatization wants to deviate the public opinion uh, from important topics such as impunity, violence, corruption, and the lack of efficiency for long-term solutions. They do away with the message by attacking the messenger. Stigmatization against the press is a strategy used by public officials from all three levels in all entities of the country of levels of governments. As you have seen, the government of Baja California, Valdez, who attacking 10 times the media outlet Semanario Z with stigmatizing um, phrases such as the Seminario is uh, angry because we do not buy ads. The, he denied um, interviews by saying, just make up your own interview. So there is a context of impunity and violence in Baja California from 20 aggressions against the press in 2018 to 32 in 2019 and 34 in 2020. 34 of, out of those 34, most of them were perpetrated by public officials. In Guanajuato, Article 19 documented 25 aggressions against the press in 2020, including the murder of journalist Vasquez in Salamanca in November last year. One day after his murder, a group of journalists um, demonstrated in front of the municipality and the mayor answered, going 5.30 a.m. to cover a piece of news. Well, you know that you are risking yourself by re-victimizing um, the journalists. There is information about the murder of journalists when the executive affirmed that those murders are not um, something that depends on the state denying the responsibility of the state to guarantee uh, fundamental rights. Last uh, yesterday, the um, president included a section uh, in about the supposedly the, uh, the lies that the media outlets publish, but it's a court of truth to attack, stigmatize, uh, critique journalists or any person that is not aligned with the federal government. The problem is not that the press is being questioned. Citizens can and should agree uh, bear in mind what is being published by the journalists to foster public debate, but it is the head of the state the one that decides whether the journalists are lying or not. They foster prior, uh, prior censorship, thus affect the freedom of expression, plurality, right to being informed in the society. Also manipulating public opinion, but categorizing any criticism as a lie. It is not compatible with the democracy that from the public administration wants want to foster criteria of truth, but they are stigmatizing 
those uh, journalists. And that criterion, it is used to inhibit criticism, uh, public criticism. Perdón, no Gustavo, go ahead. Good afternoon. I'm Gustavo Alaniz Ortega, and I'm the executive director of the Mexican Center of Environmental Law. I would like to respectfully greet all the participants. I will talk about stigma, stigmatization and the impact on people. The civil society has remained silent while violations to human rights occurred. The civil society is opposed to these issues. It, it is a conservative civil society. These are just some sentences that have been uttered by the Mexican government regarding the work of uh, human rights defenders and against the organized civil society. These uh, sentences uh, are within an adverse context for uh, human rights defenders. Uh, the rights um, have been established and in December 2020, 45 people were uh, murdered and, uh, in possible connection with their work. One thing that stands out is the fact uh, that the country is being militarized in general, specifically areas where projects, large scale projects are being developed, such as the case of the Mayan train, the national law for the use of force grants the National Guard uh, a large, a high level of discretionality in terms of choosing when to use force, including lethal force against protests and meetings and gatherings. We have observed as well the repression of protests, such as uh, the one ordered by the governor of Guanajuato in June 2020 against family members of uh, the disappeared, of missing persons. It is of special concern to see the extractivist policies engaged in by the current government, which have increased the violence against people who defend environmental rights. Last year, the Mexican Center of Environmental Law registered 90 aggressions in 65 different situations, which include threats, intimidations, stigmatization, criminalization, and 18 murders. 40% of cases, uh, or in 40% of the cases, the perpetrators were uh, allegedly agents of the state. In this year so far, we have seen 13 murders committed against uh, environmentalists. So uh, it is clearly a trend that is on the rise. This physical, structural, and symbolic violence, which is exercised against uh, defenders, is incompatible with a safe and favorable environment, which is necessary for people, associations, and organizations that promote uh, environmental matters according to the uh, recently agreement signed. In view of this reality, we are observing how the government uh, and, the, and its policies keep four lines, stigmatization, militarization, impunity, and lack of support and strengthening to institutions as a protection mechanism for uh, human rights defenders and journalists. We are at a crossroads because the members of organizations and collectives no longer dedicate their time to uh, the organizing processes or legal or political process, but also to defend themselves, to defend their lives, their integrity, and the lives of their families which is completely unacceptable in, uh, in the, under the rule of law, supposedly, that we have in Mexico. Thank you very much and good afternoon. Good afternoon. Commissioners and representatives of the Mexican government. I am Lucia Lagunes Huerta. I'm the Director of Communications and Information of Women, CIMACA. The public servants speaking against journalists, the media and defenders questions the legitimacy of their work and has a differentiated impact on women who are defenders. Violence with a gender component is materialized in discourses that question the capacity of women journalists just because they break with traditional gender roles that keep 
women silent and uh, stop them from positioning themselves in historically uh, in positions historically occupied by men. Uh, communication and information for women, CIMAC, the association that I represent, ever since Lopez Obrador took office has registered a number of aggressions against women journalists. If we compare this with the first three years of the previous government, the increase in violence is 186 percent. We find actions of stigmatization, lack of uh, legitimation of these actions and public uh, servants being uh, attacked. And this is backed by messages that strengthen stereotypical messages with a misogynist type of discourse that naturalizes violence as a way of subjecting women to these uh, oppressions. We find this in digital spaces and uh, we find this in actions against communicators. Alta Delma Murillo and Pamela Cerdeira are examples of this. They published columns that were critical with the federal government and they would they denounced abuses of authorities and also the Marine. We've seen also attacks against those who speak in favor of gender uh, of gender equality and speak against gender violence. They have received threats and uh, uh, attacks against all uh, sorts of elements. So this renders visible how these camps, uh, these um, smear campaigns against women's journalists has a differentiated aspect on their lives and how normalizing these actions uh, has an impact on and has emotional costs and they condition their freedom of expression. The influence of the presidential discourse at other levels, such as the state and municipal levels, is reflected as a trickle-down effect. Public officials use intimidation by, uh, for example, disrupting or interrupting journalists or scolding them or questioning their capacity to understand and uh, making them look ridiculous or doubting their credibility, of course, based on gender stereotypes to you know, deviate the attention from uh, what they are actually claiming. So within the context of impunity, violence, gender violence is normalized. This violence is committed against these women's journalists. And this is repeatedly, and uh, they are intimidated and they cease to uh, conduct their activities. And when they stop being activists, citizens miss out on knowing about these variety, this variety of issues. And uh, this weakens democracy as a whole and an informed citizenship. Thank you. Thank you very much to the representatives of the civil society. The state has the floor for 20 minutes. Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, dear rapporteurs, uh, officials from the C, uh, from the IACHR, especially the uh, executive uh, secretary. Good afternoon. We thank you. We thank the civil society organizations who requested this hearing and the IACHR for providing the space for dialogue and uh, to for allowing Mexico to refer to these issues. Um, the position of the Mexican state will be established by the spokesperson of the presidency, Jose Ramirez Cuevas, and by the head of the unit for the defense of human rights of the Secretariat of Government, Enrique Ilasoje Palazuelos. They will be joined by Marcos Moreno Baez, coordinator of international affairs uh, of human rights of the uh, Secretariat of Government. Without further ado, Jesus Ramirez, you have the floor. Good afternoon. We thank you for this invitation and for the organization for to allow the Mexican government to clarify and give their opinion so that we can move forward together towards building a democratic world in, re, in keeping with human rights. One of the pillars is the existence of plural media with uh, freedom of expression. Our president, Andres Manuel Lopez, Lopez Obrador, uh, of course, uh, find these to be essential rights. 
in July 2018, the people of Mexico chose a change towards a democratic and peaceful transition. Many citizens chose to step away from ideas that led con the country to decadence, authoritarianism, corruption, and uh, the, which only favored a minority. They also sought to see a change in the way that governments perceived communication and put an end to a policy that sought to uh, limit and uh, apply censorship on the media and which had stepped away from the reality and from citizens as a whole. Now we have a commitment to transparency, accountability and open discussion and the protection of journalists also to ensure plurality. This contributes to the construction of an informed citizenship and a committed democracy. The government of Mexico, since the beginning, they reduced significantly the expenditures of official uh, advertising, which was before given to corporations. And instead of doing this, now we ensure the full freedom and a new way of direct communication with the media and with society by dealing with problems uh, and informing the citizens and the journalists simultaneously on the problems and on the reasons behind the decisions that are made. In this sense, press conferences of Andres Manuel López Obrador have become, since day one, as the Center for Communication with Mexicans by exercising democracy and first applying an irrestricted access to Article 6 and 7 of the Mexican Constitution, which ensure the free expression of ideas and which will not be subject to any legal uh, proceedings. Also, the freedom of opinion and expression and of disseminating information is guaranteed. As a matter of fact, these press conferences are part of the communication activities of this government. And uh, citizens uh, can access th to this. And it is also a public exercise of accountability. Many topics of public interest are exposed in these press conferences and the discussions behind issues, which are the response of questions asked by the journalists. I apologize, the audio is really poor. This involves the building of a citizenship and of a political culture. The prior government was characterized by a lack of trust in politics. And this was translated into a lack of trust to democracy as a whole. And our citizenship was fragile because of the lack of information that was shared in a society that was stepping away from politics and which were disappointed in politics. Ladies and gentlemen, the 652 press conferences that have been held by the president of our country have meant for many people to really see in real time how a government is made, to live in real time how problems are analyzed and how decisions are made. They are also proof of the freedom of expression that is exists in Mexico. Never before a president has spoken openly to the press every single day. This has opened the door to a transformation and has revealed the need from stepping away to step away from an authoritarian way of doing things and has revealed that hiding things is no use. If there are those who are not fully, who do not feel fully represented, can uh, present this to the government because a response will always be given. If any of you have, have assisted to these press conferences, you know that questions can be asked to the president and to different ministers and have always found a response that is well thought with respect to these questions. Many times problems have been solved, even in those same press conferences and people have participated in these dialogues in the same way as the national media and independent media. The work of citizens journalism are, uh, is finally recognized and they have a space in our government. The morning press conferences play a key role in the national policies. 
However, there is no evidence of what is what is being said about censorship and authoritarianism. These attacks are probably supported by uh, large corporations and uh, these problems can affect freedom of expression and the government of Mexico does not want to have uh, like an official truth in the media. They do not want the means of social communication to be, uh, uh, or they do not want a docile press that are compliant with what the government says, but rather promote a democratic exchange of ideas and promote participation. And we want the media and the press and political actors to put ethics at the forefront with no manipulation or alteration of the information. The same is applies to social media and building new legislations and of course uh, engaging in these actions. The government of Mexico is against regulation of content, both media and the uh, and social media or traditional media and considers that there must be free circulation and must be society and citizens as a whole to uh, issue their opinions and circulate them freely. We must enter into a new form of ethics where freedom of expression is fully respected as well as maintain the neutrality of the media. This has been this Ne negative actions have characterized the prior government and now no idea is persecuted. There is free circulation of ideas now, free circulation of opinions, and we live in a situation of full freedom. Violence and pressure on journalists still exist, but they do not come from the national government or the executive branch. They come from other agents, which might be public, but also private. We can say with full confidence that the federal government has no official who might be looking for uh, a situation where content prepared by journalists have a special or a specific type of content that serves a certain purpose or that works for uh, in the interest of the government. Also, this administration has never asked any journalist to be fired or removed from their position because of the content published. In a democracy, uh, the situation must be favorable for the democratic uh, exchange of ideas and there must be no bias or alteration. The government, of course, reserves the right to uh, argue and to maybe refute certain opinions or information that maybe are not in keeping with the reality. We are not talking about establishing a single unique truth, but just to keep to the facts and to the situations that can be proven. The president has never censored any journalist and has never attacked freedom of speech and has never stigmatized anyone. The president, of course, presents his arguments with information in the face of uh, journalistic bias. And uh, sometimes this bias is in defense of economic interests and it is expressed through the media. What is stigmatized is lies and misinformation, but never journalists or media outlets. They might be pointed out when there are practices that are not ethical, but that does not mean that they are criminalized or stigmatized. Therefore, we would like to point out the fact that the press conferences by Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador are there to inform millions of citizens in Mexico and all, while also ensuring the freedom of speech in the media and the journalists. On the other hand, the doors of these press conferences are open so that any media outlet and any journalist can ask questions and even think about these issues uh, with the public. So they are open to the media, they're open to communicators, they're open to the voice of the victims and political actors. One million people usually follow these press conferences live and other uh, look at them 
uh, over the week. So this is a very important forum for opinion exchange and information in our country. This is a free positive that makes the state to respect and guarantee its exercise, not only hinder it, but adopt specific measures to guarantee it can be put into freedom of the press, cannot be reduced to the freedom of the uh, companies, and the uh, future of democracy cannot be in the hands of the market. However, the Mexican state does guarantee or establishes mechanism to guarantee the life, the, the safety of these uh, journalists. Freedom of expression has improved significantly, uh, promoting the creation of media outlets. It affirms the right uh, to reply and no journalists have been threatened during this administration. The risk it, it has for these persons to be journalists are the result of those who do not uh, tolerate criticism or of organized criminal groups. To, there is a mechanism for the protection of human rights defenders and journalists that protects more than 1,400 citizens and works with the different international mechanisms and organizations and other organizations that are present here today. In order to uh, talk further about the protection of uh, journalists and human rights defenders, I will now give the floor to the head of the Minister for Defense of uh, Human Rights. Thank you, commissioners members of the organizations of the civil society. I want to greet the Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Expression of the Inter-American Commission. And the policy regarding the protection mechanism in the last three years has been to strengthen the reaction capacity to fulfill the mission to protect uh, human rights defenders and journalists that suffer aggressions because of their work. Part of this strengthening was translated into a course that since 2018 has been given to the mechanism. The government has uh, given 783 seven, uh, million pesos in 2018. This is a budget allocated and 27 million uh, were approved this year. That is to say this year we will have 416 million and 21 million dollars. The strengthening has been reflected through uh, several persons that were incorporated journalist defenders. When this administration started in December 2018, there were 700, uh, 700 people incorporated, and now we have more than 1,400, more than 78%. Uh, the increase of more than 78%, which has increased the visibilization through different sources, but especially it has to do with the relation developed with the civil society organizations, some of them present here today. Although the mechanism is by definition a reactive mechanism, the administration is emphasizing the prevention uh, strategy. For example, the construction the development of a policy with civil society organizations that have uh, worked jointly to uh, develop an agenda to uh, face um, situations of aggression against them. Also national monitoring and a map of risks in uh, the region and also information that is being compiled to show the situation uh, of journalists and defenders. These preventive measures have been supported by cooperation funds from the UK, the US, the, and also the High Commissioner uh, for Human Rights of the UN. 
the main body for decision making has been transformed in a space of exchange of reflections and ideas where we can count on the presence of uh, cities and council made up by human rights defenders, journalists, and government uh, actors with the aim of addressing issues that go beyond the mechanism of this program to address a different phenomena with the state approach. For the system of protection of defenders and journalists, this is huge and has been acknowledged by the Mexican state. We have acknowledged that since December, 2018 to date, we have seen how 41 journalists were murdered and 61 uh, human rights defenders. Unfortunately, in June 2021, we registered the murder of three defenders, including Gustavo Sanchez, who was part of this mechanism. This, uh, there is a commitment of this protection system, and we are convinced as the Inter-American Convention establishes that the defense of human rights cannot be guaranteed with these persons uh, are victims of uh, threats and any kind of physical um, aggression or any other threats. So we should consolidate a national system for the protection through prevention policies in order to work before those uh, scenarios that violate the fundamental rights of defenders and journalists through the coordination with federative uh, bodies and with the state logic. The roadmap that was implemented through the mechanism takes into account different actions that I'm going to explain right now. Firstly, the fulfillment of each of the recommendations issued by the High Commissioner for Human Rights regarding the diagnosis on the functioning of the mechanism. Also, review of the uh, protective framework for the protection of journalists and the implementation of coordination mechanism for the effective protection of journalists. The promotion of diagnosis from the state to foresee the events and also um, fostering state institutions to comply with their uh, responsibility in terms of justice when there are aggressions against defenders of journalists. In order to offer our conclusions to the commission, I will now give the floor to my colleague. Jesus, you're muted. Commissioner, the transparency in Mexico is, has never been at this level before. The government intervention that was a stake, for example, during the earthquake, the peso devaluation, the massacre, bank fraud, FOA PROA, the repression against women in 2006, this required resources. And also the identification and of corruption cases among officials. Commission the state of Mexico reinstate its commitment to continue strengthening institutional programs in terms of protection of human rights defenders and journalists with civil society organizations and human rights international organizations. We have proposals for this dialogue and we want to um, emphasize the willingness of the state for this hearing to be successful. Thank you to the representatives of the state. I will now give the floor to Mr. Fernandez Maldonado of the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. Good afternoon. I want to greet the authorities of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, authorities, representatives of the state, and representatives of the civil society. It is once again a pleasure to participate in such an important hearing as representative in Mexico of the UN Office uh, of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. 
I'm here to provide information without being under oath regarding the human rights situation of human rights defenders and journalists in Mexico. What I say should not be understand as a waiver of the immunities and responsibilities in compliance with the convention. This participation shows the willingness for collaboration between the high commissioner within the mechanism of joint actions to contribute to the protection of human rights defenders in the Americas and also collaboration in terms of freedom of expression. The civil society has expressed and the state has recognized the difficult situation human rights defenders and journalists are going through. The rapporteurships of the UN have pointed out that Mexico is one of the most dangerous countries for defenders and journalists. As they have pointed out, the high commissioner in different special proceedings, the increase in violence in the election pros and impacts right of association and the possibility of participating in such a process. Several aspects that contribute to this situation are the following. Impunity in most matters against defenders and journalists, attacks, aggressions, and a stigmatizing the statement or speeches by officials, repre repression by authorities of the federal and local governments, and the repression of strikes or demonstrations. The specific risk for those who defend the environment, look for the disappeared relatives, defend the LGBTI plus community, or denounce acts of corruption. The obstacles are the exacerbated a risk of sexual violence for women, defender and journalists in such a patriarchal society with gender stereotypes and the proactive action of certain officials in the uh, exercise of their functions that place defenders at serious risk by carrying uh, these uh, tasks that the institutions omit. Some measures that may contribute to changing these situations are the following. Firstly, to strengthen the protection mechanism that has been mentioned, develop a public policy that is nationally comprehensive to create situations that uh, protect their um, right to defend human rights, and freedom of expression, carry out investigations with a gender approach, a multicultural approach to end impunity and attacks towards defenders and journalists, especially murders and disappearances. This investigation should take into account the possible, um, the possibility that they were attacked due to the work they're carrying out as the Human Rights Committee has pointed out, and go over other legislation used to criminalize the defense of human rights and freedom of expression, reinforce legislation to prevent legal actions that may hinder freedom of expression, investigate cases of corruption, sanction or punish public officials involved in these aggressions, guarantee that public officials do not, do not have any stigmatizing speech against defenders and journalists and recognize the value of their role for a democratic society, guarantee that all authorities, especially municipal and federal comply with their duties regarding human rights, truly guarantee that the institutions in charge of the protection of the environment, the search for disappeared persons, the transparency, the, um, I mean, the guarantee of justice can fulfill their duties as a way of protecting human rights and protecting human rights defenders. The Escazú Accord 
It is a regional agreement that protects explicitly human rights defenders and environmentalists that strengthens access to information and justice. And Mexico played an important role in its approval and it offers an opportunity to foster changes that create uh, an efficient environment to guarantee the safety of human rights defenders and journalists. Thank you. Thank you, Guillermo. Now we will start with the participation of the human rights with the commission. I will now give the floor to Esmeralda Rosemena, country reporter. Thank you. Madam President, first Vice President of the Commission, led by women, I want to greet all the civil society organizations that have given us the opportunity today to listen to your statements. It's such a complex issue for the democratic life of our peoples to the honorable representatives of the state of Mexico for the opportunity of providing information about the perspective from the executive branch on this regard. I want to especially thank the representative of the High Commissioner because he has been very precise about some aspects that I had already written uh, down and I am interested in this opportunity provided by the hearings in order to listen to the parties to develop our mandate regarding the context of a country of a state, the perspective of a state. In this case, the defense of the defenders, human rights defenders, and the journalists as, as promoters, as the spokesperson said, promoters of a dialogue that builds citizenship or that should build citizenship. Thus having this opportunity, it's very important for the commission because Mexico and as country rapporteur, I want to say that Mexico should translate its greatness to its institutions its justice, its position in terms of human rights. The representative of the High Commissioner mentioned that Mexico had a key role in the Escazú Agreement that may be a platform that according to civil society is today of confrontation of ideas that that should become a constructive fruitful dialogue as you have mentioned to find a way out. The stance of the civil society when you mentioned that you have registered an increase in the number of public presentations or press conferences 
by public authorities have an effect in that role of building citizenship. So these ideas to measure how we work so that this space of dialogue is useful to strengthen the replies that or responses that should be given to a society, to a group of persons that aid together with the governments. Human rights defenders cannot be seen as enemies of the state. They should be seen as allies and journalists have to carry out this task of placing public opinion, the diversity of showing the public opinion, the diversity of opinions, and that has to do with strengthening democratic spaces. This is an issue that requires a political will of having a close relation I personally, and on behalf of the Commission, I want to say that we want to help you to have a fruitful dialogue to, so that these two parties can work together. Mexico is one of the few countries that has a mechanism, special mechanism for the protection that is affected by a series of problems, for example, regarding the budget, but this is not related to as increasing the budget. It is necessary to build uh, public policies with all actors. And now as rapporteur, I offer Mexico and the civil society organizations to have immediately a formula for these two parties to get closer and establish a dialogue. I think there is a solid platform and We want to build citizenship, strengthen democratic values, and accept diversity, different opinions. That does not mean that we are enemies. So we have to keep on working, bearing that in mind. We should have a roadmap to improve this reality. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you very much, Madam Rapporteur. I would like to now give the floor to Commissioner Margaret May McCullen. Go ahead. Um, thank you, Madam President. And um, I my salutations to all members of um, civil society who are participating and who have spoken um, to us and given us information. Um, and who brought these to these matters to our attention. And also I salute the me members of the representatives of the state of Mexico who are present and who have also participated in this discourse. Um, I am not going to take up too much time because I want to give some of my time to the, spe uh, the Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Expression, who is the expert in this field. But I, I must say that I am very, very concerned at the fact that um, violence against journalists has been going on for quite a while in Mexico and seems to be on the increase. And I do agree, um, Oh, I do. I also um, I salute the uh, representative of the United Nations. It's so good to collaborate always. 
And I do agree with uh, your words. The level of, of violence against human rights defenders and journalists must be, and on any, any field of, of in, uh, uh, questioning, be due to the impunity which exists when violence does occur and they're not properly investigated to successful conclusion and, and legal actions taken as they ought. And, and as my sister rapporteur has pointed out, human rights defenders are necessary to assist those in the, in the public, the citizens who do not have a voice and journalists are pivotal for the continuance of democracy. And no, no, lab, no journalist can be neutral. They state the facts and they state the opinion on the facts and, and which they're entitled to do. And I, I, I was rather shocked at what we saw in the videos. And I want to ask this, when the, these comments of denigrating, denigrating uh, um, um, journalists and so on commence with this administration? Was it from the inception or did something happen to start this on? And I do deplore completely the, the, what we have heard about the treatment of women journalists and women human rights defenders that sexual violence against women and violence of all kinds against women has always been at too high a level in Mexico. But in these two fields, they're deplored, they're to be deplored. And when they're done by anyone and the jurisprudence of the court has dealt with these uh, matters of this kind, statements which stigmatize others from the mouths of the highest levels of, of those in power. I know I sat on one or two cases when I was a member of that court. So that we ought to look at that. And I would, I, I would invite the state of Mexico to, to check, check the jurisprudence. I now say thank you and we'll end there so that my, my, the special rapporteur can use the rest of my time. Thank you. Gracias, Commissioner. Le pregunto al Commissioner Estuardo Rallon si tiene preguntas o comentarios. Mr. Estuardo Rallon, do you have any comments? Yes, I would like to greet the representatives of the organizations and, of course, the uh, Federal Republic of Mexico. I would like to also greet the ambassador of Mexico and the representative of the High Commissioner. I would like to briefly point out uh, the fact that we have mentioned the need to maybe review or revise legislation that could have some kind of typology, uh, certain ambiguous typology for certain crimes because it might tend to criminalizing or creating a mechanism uh, and not allowing the work, the correct work of uh, human rights defenders. As Esmeralda said, uh, of course, dialogue is essential and the commission, of course, contributes to these constructive dialogues. But I would like to also mention the importance of the technical assistance provided by the commission, for example, with respect to the standards that exist when it comes to reviewing or proposing by the executive branch some legislative reform or trying to review uh, certain specificities. Of course, uh, the possibility of providing technical assistance uh, to review the standards as part of the work that could be developed if uh, there were to be a review of that legislation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Before I give the floor to the Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Expression, I would like to ask specifically if within the mechanisms of protection, is there a differentiated approach to women journalists? And if there is some kind of training on uh, uh, 
the eradication of stereotypes and traditional gender roles so that these courses do not fall into these stereotypes. Without further ado, Pedro Vaca, Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Expression, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Madam President. And uh, thank you very much to all the commissioners and my colleague, the Special Rapporteur, and uh, all of the commissioners, the civil society, and the Mexican states. I would like to first share a few insights on uh, these issues. I know that the, these uh, questions focus on the mandate of uh, this office, and I would also like to ask a few questions to the state. When we talk about stigmatization, and uh, we have a component of prevention of violence within the inter-American system, and it refers to the fact that many times stigmatization can be can happen within a favorable environment, and that might favor violence against human rights defenders and journalists. So this is a premise that must uh, operate within any democratic state, and it must be distinguished from other freedom of expression environments. And it's the fact that all authorities have a right to defend themselves from the public criticism, of course. And all authorities actually must defend themselves from any criticism which they may consider fair or those that they might consider unfair or misinformed. Because part of our democracies has to do with drawing that line and distinguishing between defending yourself uh, from a public opinion that can be or cannot be shared or be considered as stigmatizing because the person who exercises freedom of speech should not feel that this is a punishment. If the government defends itself, it shouldn't be considered a, uh, a um, an action of this sort. So we do not need uh, to care for these public discussions. We do not need, of course, the death of a journalist. But in countries where there are cases of violence against journalists and against human rights defenders, these actions of prevention, of course, must be further developed. Of course, they must not be, uh, they must not occur when there is a death, but when there are cases, these prevention actions must take place. I would like to suggest as well uh, differentiation because it depends on how the state defines this. We've heard that these might be noble purposes, but a very different thing is to consider what impact this could have on the public debate. So I would like to invite you all to put ourselves in the shoes of uh, those people who have been pointed, you know, been indicated and selected and uh, named, yes, because of uh, speaking about something and what impact this can have on their freedom of expression in the future. Yes, so I think this is a question that we should probably ask ourselves because we're not talking about just one more space. We're talking about official spaces that are uh, of course, part of uh, the government. And the go it is a government that must guarantee the freedom of expression of those who are in favor of the government, but especially for those people who are opposed to the government. And let me go quickly to the questions. Um, when we talk about uh, this, uh, who is who in the morning press conferences, we have international fact checkers. Uh, and I would like to know the, uh, if the state knows the principles under which the, these uh, fact checkers are certified. And if you can tell us which principles these quien uh, quien, the who is who in the morning press conferences occupies. And also in the morning press conferences, what does the state do in case of a mistake? For example, a, me a media outlet that did not fact check and they might be you know, not fulfilling one of these journalistic principles. So what does the state do? Of course, it is true that this is a space that allows for opportunities and this is essential in Mexico. Um, I think that uh, my office 
uh, for freedom of expression provides what can, can provide the technical support for anything that you may need and the quien es quien the who is who space must uh, take into account the fact that it might be affecting the possibility of having a public debate this is just uh, an indication but uh, this cannot be under the, the context of uh, blaming. It must be more open and under the context of freedom of expression. Thank you very much. Soledad Garcia, do you have any question in the little time that we have left? Thank you very much, Madam President. I would like to warmly greet everyone, the state of Mexico, the ambassador, and of course, the Commission and my colleague, a Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Expression and the Civil Society. I have a specific point. Of course, I would like to support the enter into force of this uh, initiative and the leadership of Mexico and how this provides a framework for the protection and a framework of responsibility of Mexico to protect environmental defenders, uh, this is a great concern that I share with the United Nations uh, regarding uh, how risky it is to defend the environment and defend nature and defend the territories in Mexico. The numbers mentioned that this is one of the most dangerous countries to defend nature and the environment. And this invites us to consider the Inter-American standards to develop mechanisms of protection. A concrete question is whether there is a specific line for the protection of environmental defenders, because in the mandate we have mentioned this in our annual report, and recently we have engaged in investigations of the environmental defender Jose Ascension Carrillo Vasquez in Mazapil, in Zacatecas. And of course, we are also concerned regarding the situation of human rights defenders, uh, regarding the project of the Mayan train and other projects in Mexico. So this is our concrete question. How does Mexico intend to improve the protection of its uh, environmental defenders? Thank you. Thank you very much, Rapporteur. We now begin the second round of intervention, civil society, 10 minutes, go ahead. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to everyone present here this afternoon. My name is Graciela Rodriguez and I am the executive director of the Mexican Commission for the Defense and Promotion of Human Rights. Dissent is a fundamental part of democracy. We must recognize that press and those who defend human rights and uh, civil society organizations or non-governmental organizations are democratic agents, which are essential for the lives of our societies. Therefore, their important work should never be stigmatized or criminalized by authorities. On the contrary, authorities must ensure not only the integrity of them, but also must guarantee the conditions for the full exercise of freedom of speech and the protection of human rights. Therefore, we request that this honorable commission uh, to um, encourage uh, the authorities to protect uh, the work of journalism and to strengthen democracy as a result. Second, that they ask the Mexican state at the three levels of governments to stop these narratives and this legal harassment, which put uh, the press at risk and put them in a vulnerable position as well as human rights offenders. Thirdly, that they ask the Mexican government to strengthen the mechanism of protection for defenders and journalists by increasing and professionalizing their staff and ensuring the financial resources and adopting preventive measures to counter arrest the stigmatization discourse. Fourth, to remain alert to possible attacks to uh, members of the uh, organizations who have requested this hearing. Fifth, to ask the Mexican state to have an integrated policy with a gender policy, which is intersectional in order to fight against uh, the violence against uh, these journalists and engage in prevention measures in order to build uh, this process. The civil society organizations 
do not want to suspend the morning press conference and do not want to suspend the communication policy of the government. On the contrary, and in order to build dialogue, we asked that the Inter-American Commission create a uh, mechanism to avoid stigmatization in these communications. And would the state accept through the Rapporteurship of Freedom of Speech of the IACHR, would they accept uh, a set of standards, international standards that could be observed during these morning press conferences to avoid stigmatizing communication? I would like to give the floor now to Gustavo Alanis. Thank you very much. Thank you, Grace. Good afternoon, uh, Gustavo Alanis Ortega from the Mexican Center for Environmental Law. I hope that I was clear enough when I referred to the 18 murders of environmental defenders in Mexico last year. In the last six or seven years that we've been measuring this, this has been the highest number so far. And as I also mentioned before this year, we have 13 and it's only been six months of this year and we already have 13. So it's essential to take this with the seriousness and, and uh, promptness that it requires. I think that we must move forward to build and implement and oversee public policies where we are all involved in order to adequately protect human rights defenders, including environmentalists. I do not want to talk on behalf of my colleagues, but of course, it, the support proposed by the rapporteur is more than welcome and the possibility of opening dialogue. I would like to conclude by saying uh, and giving an example of this uh, type of uh, physical, structural, and symbolic violence, which is the case of the Yaqui tribe. This year, so far, and even in these past weeks, we have seen how they have been the victims of persecution, kidnapping, and murder only for defending their right to water. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Commissioner and state representatives and government representatives. It is our uh, pleasure to have Jesus with us because this speaks of the importance that the government considers uh, with respect to a forum of this type. We would uh, be more than happy to build such mechanism as proposed by the Inter-American Commission. Certain specification with respect to an issue that was mentioned and in order to move forward with this media plurality, we can definitely uh, focus on official advertising. Um, the wasting has been reduced, but it is important to take into account that the expenditures are still concentrated on a certain media outlets. We have uh, only a few media that concentrate 50% of uh, the budget and then 387 that concentrate the rest. So I think that it would be interesting uh, to uh, reform the general communication law. Uh, in terms to the right to reply, uh, it is essential and it's true. No one is saying that in a democracy that the press cannot be scrutinized or analyzed, but the thing is how this is exercised by the public uh, authorities. And the right to reply as established in Mexico indicates that this applies only to clarify through facts and through evidence, not through um, this uh, stigmatization or disqualification, because we can talk about uh, how the uh, morning press conferences would take place in order to uh, be in keeping with these standards. And regarding transparency, we would like to move forward also when we try to contrast this with the uh, 
executive power and with the documents, especially in the Office of the Presidency and the General Coordination of Social Communication, we think that this information should be facilitated and provided because whatever is said in those press conference is also a, uh, un, uh, subject to public scrutiny. So tolerance to criticism by the authorities is always something that I always mention and that it must be higher than any other than in any other citizens. OK, so they must grow a thick skin. Yes, public officials must grow a thick skin because this helps ensure a democratic uh, debate. Thank you. Si terminó la sociedad civil. The civil society has concluded. We cannot hear you. Good afternoon. Babelina Flores, I represent uh, Reporteros Sin Fronteras, Journalists Without Borders in Mexico, and I would like to go over something uh, my organization has pointed out. It has to do with impunity. Impunity to us is connected to all these attacks and these murders and these appearances of journalists that so far have all this long list of journalists has not been explained and the mexican state should develop a comprehensive policy that is clear with clear guidelines on how to continue with this uh, fight against impunity that is not only related to corruption it is related to all those uh, de facto powers and the corruption of politicians and um, police corporations. And as long as these murders are not um, explained and these disappeared journalists are found, we cannot reduce impunity. I think it's important to strengthen the uh, capacity of investigation of the specialist DA for crimes against freedom of expression beyond economic resources. We have to strengthen the capacity of investigation uh, groups, especially for these investigations when they do not progress in local DA uh, offices. Thank you. I will now give the floor to the representatives of the state for 10 minutes. Thank you. We take down notes of the questions of the arguments that have been expressed. We want to thank the commissioners and the representatives of the journalists and the civil society that have uh, freely expressed themselves. For the first time, the Mexican state, the ones who work in these communication areas for the defense of human rights and journalism, we are journalists and human rights defenders. What do we mean by uh, repression, by persecution? We are working in solidarity and taking uh, solid uh, steps in order to prevent all these actions. We are taking measures in order to reduce impunity, to narrow the gap uh, to those that persecute journalists is not a policy of the state. This government, the current Mexican government, has not repressed or imprisoned or attacked any journalist or human rights defender. We want to repeat that because it's a um, huge change regarding the policies of the state. The debate that we have now is related to the scope of the debate of this uh, issue of stigmatization and the role of media outlets and what's the role of the Mexican government in connection with this debate. But we are not talking about persecution uh, or um, repression events. The uh, willingness uh, for dialogue that is requested through this international mechanism shows that we are willing to, proud to work together to avoid any action that may affect 
the work of human rights defenders and journalists in the country. In that sense, that is what we wanted to say. We want to have a fruitful dialogue. We are willing to work together to guarantee access to information as we have done, but we can make progress and be more sensitive in this situation. And we need to say that in the main train or the case of the airport or other infrastructure uh, constructions of this government, there is no militarization or repression against uh, a non-governmental uh, organization. And there is no legal action or no um, defender that has uh, complained against this. There are uh, consultations um, from uh, all the, so the places where these infrastructures are being developed in order to come to an agreement with the society. This is a different policy. In that sense, I could like to point out that we take into account what has been said about these fake news section that was established in the press conference this morning that is just aimed at pointing out how fake news can damage, um, but is not to stigmatize journalists or media outlets, but we agree we should follow international standards to um, foster this debate. I can now give the floor to Enrique Dazote of the Department for the Protection of Journalists and Human Defenders. I could like to say that we have complied with all the duties established in the ESCASU agreement. We have a section in the federal government that involves 12 dependencies that uh, 12 that are working in this space and the organization that I represent that regarding all these uh, spaces are being fostered in all areas by the government in order to come to an agreement and comply with the ESCASU agreement. We agree this is not about strengthening the mechanism, but this should be reflected in implementation of public policies. We work every day to have a robust policy that is um, to increase its reach. There are great challenges, especially to coordinate with the states regarding impunity and other issues. And what we want to do is to have an exist uh, mechanism as a national coordinator of a system that is more has more impact on the protection of human rights defenders and journalists within the framework of such a system we can have a solid strategy so that we stop being a reactive um, scheme to be a, pre uh, a scheme of prevention and in the local spheres when most of the aggressions occur against uh, human rights defenders, we can be present regarding access to justice and reviewing at the federal and local level, um, reviewing the legislation so that it complies with all inter-American systems and of the universal system as well. I would like to point out that through this mechanism and with international cooperation, we have supported and trained staff uh, regarding uh, gender approaches, and there are trainings regarding the protection of human uh, environmental uh, defenders. I would like to add, as you have mentioned, that in connection with the current situation, the situation in Jackie Sonora there is a space developed by the national government to have a coordination of all uh, local 
authorities and federal authorities in order to guarantee the enjoyment of human rights in that region. I would like to add some things regarding the collaboration of the Mexican state uh, at an international level. I want to highlight the work carried out by UNESCO for the strengthening of communicators in their own languages. And I would like to remind the agreement with the European Union to promote a campaign to recognize the rights of journalists and the importance of protect their work that is a national campaign and also reinforce the issue of the Yaqui peoples and other indigenous peoples. In that case, there's a plan of assistance for the Yaqui peoples, the repression, the matter of activists, of defenders of this territory is carried out by those who oppose this agreement between the indigenous authorities and the Mexican state. And we have, we are working in order to repair damage to their territory, to their water. And those opposing are responsible for this acts of violence, but we are taking measures to guarantee the safety of the journalists, of the activists and the uh, peoples. We are open to dialogue. We are open to dialogue with international organizations. Any overseeing mechanism visit, we want, want to invite you in the press conferences daily day press conferences, some officials from the UN, for example, have participated and asked questions in the press release. The Mexican state is not hiding anything, but it has a lot to share regarding its work for the defense of democracy and human rights in Mexico and the strengthening of the democracy through public deliberation with the media outlets and journalists in particular, respecting their work and making this debate public, which is key to strengthen the democratic structure and the participatory citizenship. Thank you. That is all on behalf of the state, Madam sí. President. Thank you. We will conclude this hearing I would like to thank, first of all, the civil society, as I always say, not only due to their presence today, but for the daily work you carry out to file complaints, to support all the defenders, and to all the persons that are watching this hearing, and to each and one of uh, the persons present, because they are human rights defenders, they work towards achieving uh, freedom of expression in that part of the Ameri inter-American system. I want to thank the honorable representation of the uh, Mexican state, the ambassador that contributed, uh, collaborate with the uh, commission. Not all states are willing to um, participate in these spaces that, of freedom of expression that are the basis of democracy. As my colleagues have said, the special rapporteurships, the uh, thematic rapporteurships. Um, we are available in order to build these standards for protection of uh, freedom of expression and human rights defenders. I want to thank Guillermo Fernandez Maldonado for his presence at all times from the system of the United Nations. That is how we work, the universal system with the inter-American system. This is the last hearing of the 180 period of sessions. I think we are closing this period of session with 
hope on these dialogues and I would like to thank all my colleagues, commissioners that are here present, all the others that are not here, but keep on working, special reporters, Pedro Vaca, Soledad Garcia, the huge team of the executive secretariat that he constantly contributes to the work and development of this um, hearings each of the persons that you see here that have their cameras off. These are part, they are part of the executive secretary and they are part of the inter-American system. We appreciate their work and I cannot conclude without help, uh, thanking the interpreters that have constantly helped us. They have to deal with, with us who speak very fast, those who speak in, in different languages, showing PowerPoints, videos, but they are part of what the commission means, a constant work towards the protection of human rights, fundamental freedoms, and undoubtedly you are part of this system. Thank you. This hearing is closed, as well as the 180 period of session of the Inter-American Commission. Good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Gracias.